Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and I would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating yet another simple yet quite important portfolio performance evaluation technique that's crucial for fund or portfolio performance evaluation. The name of our today's hero is the appraisal ratio. This is a quite concise and logical uh, ratio that relates your alpha, your value added, the uh, abnormal return in excess of expected market performance as per CAPM that fund manager or you as a divisor of some portfolio selection or investment strategy adds and uh, divides it by the residual risk or the idiosyncratic risk of your strategy, the risk of your portfolio or your fund that cannot be explained by the fluctuations of the market index. And today we'll calculate it for three candidate funds, BlackRock, Charles Schwab and Invesco, and relate the findings to which of the three funds have been a more attractive investment opportunity in the past five and a half years. We have got enough data to devise our conclusions starting at year-end 2015 and until the end of July 2021. So, first of all, unsurprisingly, we have to calculate daily total returns, and that is quite easy, just dividing the total return index today by the total return index yesterday and subtracting one for all four of our return series, the benchmark and the three candidate funds. And then we can use the intercept and slope functions to calculate alphas and betas of our three funds. For alphas, and those would be daily alphas, mind, we can use the intercept function. And we can refer to the array of BlackRock returns for BlackRock. And as our independent variable, we always have the return of S&P 500. So here we can just lock the columns so it doesn't change as we direct it across our three candidate funds. So we can see that the daily alpha of BlackRock is positive, it's around one basis point. Again, you do not expect to see something quite massive on the daily frequency there, we'll annualize it later on to calculate our ratios. But here we just drag it across and see that, well, the daily alpha of Charles Schwab is negative, meaning that on risk-adjusted terms this particular fund underperforms the S&P 500, whereas BlackRock and Invesco do outperform, with Invesco's outperformance being more material. However, how does this um, outperformance, this risk-adjusted value-added alpha, uh, correspond to the idiosyncratic risk investing in these funds expose you, theoretically? Well, to calculate idiosyncratic risk, we have got to calculate betas as well, and then calculate the abnormal returns and their standard deviations. So here we can use the slope function and all being lazy just copying this particular formula across, pasting it over here and changing intercept to slope and see that all three of our funds have a beta in excess of one. And that's exactly the reason why sometimes you shouldn't trust uh, the information ratio in particular when evaluating fund performance. Some of the funds might sneak out a positive information ratio by overexposing yourself to uh, market risk by use of leverage. So here uh, your appraisal ratio is actually a more powerful metric to um, even out the playing field to adjust for leverage in your calculations. Here we can see that uh, these concerns are not that material given the fact that the most uh, outperforming fund, the Invesco, has the lowest beta of the three. However, you need to keep that in mind when evaluating your potential investment opportunities, most notably if you are willing to pick one ETF to allocate a significant proportion of your capital towards. However, to proceed with our calculations, we can now calculate daily abnormal returns, so deviations from CAPM expected return of all of our three candidate funds by the use of the following procedure. We just subtract from the realized total return, the expected return, as per CAPM, given the values of alpha and beta, which are just estimated. So here we can open the parentheses and uh, select alpha with the row locked, as we don't want the alpha to change as we drag it down, but we do want it to change as we drag it across, and add beta, lock in the row, same story, multiplied by the return of the S&P 500 in a particular day. And here we lock the column, as the benchmark stays the same for all three candidate funds, but the relevant days do change as we drag it 
down. And that's the whole procedure to calculate the normal returns. So now we can drag it across and bottom left click it down. And now we can finalize our calculations of the appraisal ratio. So first we need to analyze our alphas and that's quite easy to do. We can just use the simple procedure raising our daily alphas, one plus daily alpha, to the power of 252, as there are 252 trading days in a year, as per the irregular assumption, and subtract 1. And we can see that the annualized alpha of BlackRock is 1.43%, the annualized alpha of Charles Schwab is negative, and the annualized alpha of Invesco is in excess of 5%, which is, again, a very, very promising result. And now we can start calculating our idiosyncratic risk, our residual risk, residual volatility, it goes by different names, but the main take is that we can use the sample standard deviation function and apply it to the array of abnormal returns we've just calculated and to annualize it so our alpha and our residual risk are on the same frequency, we can multiply it by the square root of 252. Any volatility scales as a square root as per the standard assumptions and we have got 252 trading days in a year approximately. And we can see that the residual risk of BlackRock is 16.63%, whereas the residual risk of Charles Schwab is quite high, and the residual risk of Invesco is very modest. And now we can uh, finally calculate our annualized appraisal ratio by dividing the annualized alpha onto the annualized residual risk. And we can see that the uh, appraisal ratio of BlackRock is quite uh, modest yet positive. The appraisal ratio of Charles Schwab is negative, reflecting its underperformance, uh, with regards to the S&P 500, whereas the appraisal ratio of uh, Invesco is uh, stellarly high. It's uh, almost 0 0.7, which reflects the fact that Invesco's fund managers deliver spectacular alpha, deliver spectacular value added per the unit of idiosyncratic risk they take on while departing from the market index, from a passive strategy. That means that the appraisal ratio is arguably an improvement over the information ratio when evaluating an active strategy. As it controls for leverage and market risk exposures, it does take into account betas when calculating abnormal returns, after all, and it does calculate the residual risk with regards to the market risk exposure of your portfolio, your strategy, or your fund. And that's all there is for the appraisal ratio and its use in evaluation of the performance of your desired portfolios of funds. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions in videos for business economics or finance topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.